Let's imagine I fling a ball off of a building. I throw it straight out ahead of me, like a baseball. Well, I have to analyze its motion in two completely separate coordinates, because they are acting independently. In the x-direction, if I'm just throwing the ball forward, it continues to just march along like this. Same speed as always in the horizontal, because it's whatever I threw it out across the, 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 the plaza with. But in the vertical direction, if I was throwing it straight out, it was initially moving at zero speed. So now it's acting like a ball that's dropped, and it's starting to accelerate. Well, the actual motion is the sum of these two components. So displacement is a vector, and if it has an x component and a y component, then the net displacement is to be down here. And the net velocity is the sum of this vector right there, plus that little vector right there. And so it's moved like so. After two seconds, it's just marched along in the horizontal, but it's now dropped further in the, hor in the vertical. And I have to take that as my x projection, and that as my y projection. The sum of those two vectors looks like that. And I keep doing this all the way through. It continues to march along in the x direction, but it's dropping in the vertical direction. And after several more seconds, it's over here. It's still just marching along in the x direction, but it's dropping faster and faster in the vertical direction. And after even more time, it looks like it lands. In the x direction, it would just keep on moving, but in the y direction, it's found the floor. So each of these increments is really the sum of two vectors. There's a delta x and there's a delta y. And there's a delta x. And there's a delta y. Notice that delta x is always the same it's delta y that's growing. In the same way, the velocity in the, or, well, for a really reason, the velocity in the horizontal direction is always the same. It's the velocity in the horizontal, or in the vertical, that's always changing. So as we move further into problems with projectiles moving through two dimensional space, we have to get good at the idea that these two motions in the horizontal and the vertical direction are completely independent. And that's because of our original equations here. That these equations separate out as vectors. That there's an x component of velocity that depends on the initial x velocity plus the acceleration in the x direction times time. And the position r of t has an x component that depends on the initial x and the initial velocity in the x direction times t times the acceleration in the x direction times t squared and so on. And this whole thing repeats for the y direction. In the y direction, the acceleration in the, in the y direction might be different than it is in the x direction. And the y initial velocity might be different than the x initial velocity and so on. So we'll have a complete set of equations like this one, or this pair, one for the x direction, one for the y direction, one for the z direction, where we'll have to fill in what these constants are and then let the clock run forward.